teenage love is often impossibly romantic, though awkward and can have a lot of uncertainty. Miyu shows exactly how shaky teenage emotions can be, but also how strong and sincere they are. At the very beginning, we see a female student caught under the rain, running for shelter when a boy around her age walks up to her and gives up his umbrella. She is a little confused since the boy runs away only to stop up front, turn around and smile gently at her, filling her heart with warmth. In the present time, Miyu wakes up to the gentle but persistent ringing of her digital clock, which also shows the date. It is the 1st of November. After turning off the ringing, she moves to get out of bed, only to knock down a picture frame that she must have been staring at before falling asleep. It is a picture of Miyu and her boyfriend and it bothers her to see that the glass on the frame is cracked. As Miyu goes downstairs, we meet her mom and learn a little bit about their relationship. Her mother has prepared breakfast for her and is already packing her school lunch, but Miyu doesn't seem to notice her mother's effort as she refuses blatantly when asked to take out the recyclable trash. She turns her attention to the TV where the weather was being reported and again, her mood worsens when she learns that it will rain later. She looks down at her breakfast and annoyed at what she was served, she leaves angrily to get ready for school. As she walks down to school, we see how stiff and unhappy Miyu is, as she awkwardly relates with people, even her friends whom she meets halfway. Her friend, Sakiko reminds her of an English test that Miyu doesn't seem ready for and after Sakiko rushes to school for her class duty, we meet Miyu's male friend, Yudo. Genuinely concerned, he asks about her relationship with her boyfriend, Shuya, but she just calls him nosy and dismisses the idea that something is wrong. From their short conversation, we learn that Miyu isn't very confident about her relationship with Shuya, even after two years. At school, Shuya is playing football on the field, and Miyu, about to write her English test, watches him from her classroom window as he scores a goal. The teacher brings her attention back to class and drops the test questions on her desk. A gust of wind blows through the open window scattering the test papers all over the floor, and students hurry to pick them up, while Miyu stands up to close the windows. For a moment, before shutting the window and returning to her seat, she stares at Shuya with a hopeful expression. During the lunch break, Sakiko asks if she would be going to the movies with Shuya that evening, and it is revealed that Miyu sees Shuya only on the first day of every month. She pretends to be okay with this arrangement, but deep down, she wants to see her boyfriend more than once a month and go on other types of dates instead of just watching movies. Sakiko urges her to be honest and tell him how she feels, but Miyu changes the subject as her friend tries to reason with her. Sakiko asks if she is bothered by the rumors. Miyu gets a flashback of the night she saw Shuya and another girl, walking and talking happily and playfully with each other. It hurt her feelings, but she forces out a fake laugh and tries to act like she is fine. Sakiko isn't phased. Miyu opens her plate to eat and is shocked by the unevenness of the food in her plate. Sakiko laughs at her and Yuko joins their table playfully. As her friends each take a bite from her food, she looks up and sees Shuya at her classroom door, waving at her. Excusing herself, she goes to meet him and behind her, we see that Yudo seems a little sad. Miyu and Shuya have an awkward relationship, mainly because Miyu keeps a fair distance, both physically and emotionally, unable to be honest with herself or Shuya and uncertain about his feelings for her. Shuya reminds her of their monthly movie date, to which she meekly responds and he leaves. Staring at his back, Miyu remembers how they started dating. Two years back, Miyu had planned to go see a movie. Shuya asked her what movie she planned on watching, and made her promise that if they both guessed the same movie, they would go together. They both guessed the same movie and while laughing at the craziness of simultaneously saying the same thing, their friends call them the perfect match and urge them to go out with each other. Shuya asks her to be his girlfriend and Miyu does not answer, stunned at the sudden proposal, but their friends don't wait for her response and start congratulating them, pushing them to take a picture. Shuya quietly asks her if she's okay with it, and she nods shyly in affirmation. Back in the present, Miyu continues to watch Shuya walk away and turn around a corner before she sadly walks back into her classroom. Since she failed her English test, she has to stay after school for detention and finish her homework, which she does and the teacher urges her not to be a regular in detention like her friend, Yudo. As she gets ready to leave, she sees Shuya and his classmates making a video out in the courtyard, and Yudo sees them too. He starts asking questions about her relationship with Shuya, but she tells him that even she does not know. Once again, we see Yudo's expression drop a little as Miyu walks away. As Miyu walks through the courtyard, Shuya sees her, bids his friends farewell and runs over to meet her. He smiles at her, happy to see her but Miyu remains stiff and shy, unsure of how to act. As they leave, we see a girl look a little unhappy to see Shuya leave, and it is the same girl that Miyu saw with him the other night. Shuya and Miyu go to the cinema and after getting popcorn and drinks for the movie, Shuya's phone rings suddenly. Acting nervous, like he is hiding something, Shuya excuses himself to go answer it, leaving Miyu feeling uncomfortable and suspicious. She looks at him unhappily and when he says he has to leave due to an emergency, she barely speaks. Upset, she feigns a positive attitude and tells him that she's fine with him leaving when she's not. Shuya keeps apologizing and eventually leaves and Miyu lets her mind wander to their first movie date together when everything was really fine. 
During their first movie date, they have a cute moment after their fingers touch. Afterwards, we see Shuya and Miyu on a hill, looking down at the town below, as Shuya takes a picture and Miyu compliments him. Their relationship is playful and sincere, and they promise to see a movie together on the first of every month, no matter what happens. Miyu's smile is large as she looks up at him, and their affection for each other is obvious. Back to reality, Miyu regrets making the promise and leaves the cinema. On the way home, Shuya texts her to come to the clock tower, and she makes her way there as lightning flashes in the sky. At the clock tower, Shuya tries to talk to her, but she remains stubborn and accuses him of playing with other girls which hurt his feelings. She crosses the street absent-mindedly, wishing Shuya would disappear, and did not notice a truck speeding towards her. Shuya yells her name and as she turns back to him, her eyes widen in realization as her umbrella flies into the sky. Shuya's phone is lying in a pool of water and Shuya himself is lying unconscious in the rain. As soon as the clock strikes seven, the clock tower is struck by lightning and the scene suddenly changes to Miyu's bedroom. The digital clock by her bed shows that it is 7 a.m. on the 1st of November. It is as if the lightning that struck the clock tower somehow reversed time and it was the morning of the same day again. Mi wakes up with a start and wonders if everything that happened was just a dream. As she moves to get up from the bed, the picture frame on the blankets falls and just like in her dream, half of the glass is cracked. Mi stares at the picture for some time, a little confused, before making her way downstairs. She has served the same breakfast as in her dream, and the weather report on TV reports the same news. On the way to school too, she meets the same people and feels a strong sense of deja vu. With the day's events matching her dream, she starts to worry about Shuya. Running to school, she tries his number, but it is not going through, increasing her worry and making her rush to his class. Shuya shows up after some time and Miyu is relieved to see him all right. She gets upset that he did not answer her call and he reveals that his phone died. He asks her for a charger but she does not have one. In a nearby class, a girl leans out the window and offers Shuya her charger, making Miyu uneasy. Her name is Tomoka, and she is the same girl that Miyu saw with Shuya the other night. She is also the girl that is rumored to be playing around with him. Miyu pretends to need a textbook when Shuya asks why she is in his class, and Tomoka offers to lend her one. Again, Miyu pretends to be fine, forcing a smile, and awkwardly leaves as Shuya and Tomoka joke around. In English class, Miyu feels like the deja vu is getting stronger, and after successfully predicting Shuya's goal, and the test papers that got blown by the wind, she starts to think maybe it was not a dream after all. The crazy thought that she may be living the day all over again pops into her head but even though she remembers everything that happened, she can't seem to remember the correct answers to her test and gets detention. During the lunch break, she tells Sakiko that she thinks the day is repeating itself, but her friend just laughs, thinking she is joking. Sakiko says she may have had a prophetic dream and since it's about Shuya being hurt, then maybe Miyu is worried about the rumors. Miyu tries to tell her friend that she does not think that is the right explanation, but they are interrupted by their friend, Yudo. Everything that happened before happens again, and Miyu can predict the events. Later, she tells Shuya that she can't go for their movie date because she's busy but really, she does not want them to go because she feels like something bad will happen if they do. Shuya is disappointed but Miyu remains firm because she wants to protect him from harm. She hopes he will go straight home after school and after detention at the end of the day. She stares at him thoughtfully from the classroom window as he makes his way out of school with his friends. Tomoka holds onto his arm as they leave but crestfallen, Shuya doesn't pay attention to her. He looks towards Miyu's classroom window and Miyu expertly ducks to avoid being seen as Shuya leaves, unhappily. Yudo, who had been forced to hide with her, questions her relationship with her boyfriend but Miyu is still unsure. She receives a text from Shuya where he shows her the movie he plans on watching, and tells her to come if she changes her mind. Miyu notices that this is the same movie she wanted to see when she lived the same day before, just before the argument with Shuya. Realizing that if he goes to see the movie, his life would be in danger, she leaves Yudo and races towards the cinema. But Shuya isn't there yet so Miyu starts searching for him all over. She eventually finds him in a restaurant with his friends, singing a birthday song for Tomoka as a waitress places a cake before them. Miyu's expression falls when she sees how close Shuya and Tomoka are sitting. Through the glass wall of the restaurant, Tomoka sees her outside and goes to confront her. Miyu pretends to be returning the textbook she borrowed in the morning, but Tomoka isn't convinced and tells Miyu to leave, that she wants Shuya to herself for the day. Miyu is hurt but asks Tomoka not to let Shuya go to the movies. She leaves, sad but relieved that she saved her boyfriend. Miyu sits solemnly, thinking, as lightning flashes in the sky. She receives a call from Yudo to pick up the lunchbox that she forgot in school, so she goes over to meet him. Yudo is surprised that Shuya is not with her and asks why the monthly movie date did not hold. Miyu calls Yudo nosy when he remains persistent with his question. But in a serious tone, Yudo tells her that he isn't being nosy, and that he doesn't like it when she cries. Before he can continue, Miyu notices Shuya and Tomoka walking on the other side of the street, and she registers that her boyfriend might be in danger. She turns to run to Shuya but Yudo hugs her to his chest and refuses to let her leave. He confesses how he feels, and begs her to stay, but behind him, Miyu can see a white van speeding down the street. 
Remembering Shuya lying unconscious, she hastily apologizes to Yudo and races against the van to save Shuya. But she's too late. Shuya is lying unconscious as Tomoka cries for help, right in front of the clock tower, just like last time and Miyu is paralyzed with grief as it starts to rain. Lightning strikes the tower as the clock strikes seven and the scene abruptly changes to Miyu waking up. A lone tear falls from her eyes and she sits up to see that it is still the 1st of November, 7 a.m. She moves to stand up and the picture frame falls again. Now, she is sure that the day is repeating itself, and not just a dream. Worried about Shuya, she goes to wait for him before going to school, and since he is not used to her acting like this, he finds it strange, evening checking to make sure she doesn't have a fever. He makes a funny face that makes her laugh and he tells her that he prefers when she smiles, then holds her hand lovingly as they walk slowly to school. Miyu notices how much she likes being with Shuya and how much she wants to save him. Upon getting to school, she meets Yudo at the entrance of the classroom. Since she has lived the day before, she knows how he truly feels for her, but he does not know this. English period goes well and Miyu gets a perfect score since she already knows both the questions and answers. After school, she goes to Shuya's class where she meets Tomoka, who makes her feel bad about how she treats Shuya until they are interrupted by Shuya and Yudo goofing off. Tomoka tries to be friendly but gets ignored as the boys focus on Miyu. At the cinema, Miyu makes Shuya turn off his phone to prevent him from leaving and is certain that she will save him until Tomoka shows up. She tells Shuya something that makes him look defeated as he looks back at Miyu and it does not look like he has a choice. He tries to apologize to his girlfriend but she refuses to let him go. Shuya is apologetic but firm and Miyu is devastated, recalling his unconscious body lying in the middle of the street. Heartbroken, she threatens to break up with him if he insists on leaving and this upsets Shuya. They get into an argument and he accuses her of being distant and not showing how she truly feels about him before walking away. While pondering over everything, Miyu gets a call from Yudo who tells her that the rumors about Shuya and Tomoka were nothing but rumors. He reveals that Shuya has been working part-time after school and Tomoka works with him. This new information stuns Miyu and almost immediately, she receives a text from Shuya to go to the clock tower. Delighted, she races there, thunder rumbling up ahead. As she runs towards the clock tower, a white van is speeding toward the clock tower, but Shuya does not notice as he tries to cross the road. Miyu is late again. Crying loudly, she cradles him and screams for help as it starts to rain. The clock tower strikes seven and is immediately struck by lightning, resetting the day. Miyu wakes up with a start and sees that it is the same day. This time, she stops the picture frame from falling and places it lovingly on the wooden photo stand with her other pictures with Shuya. Determined to change the day for the better, she goes downstairs and sees her mother ironing her school skirt. Miyu is shocked that her mother does this every morning, in addition to making breakfast as well as lunch for her. With newfound appreciation, she eats her breakfast without complaints, bids her mom goodbye sweetly and takes out the recyclable trash. Understanding that she must change herself before the day would change, she decides to make better choices. She relates sweetly with the strangers she had ignored before, and even with her friends. On the way to school, she learns from Sakiko that Shuya had liked her for a very long time, and had planned the cute encounter they had the day they started going out. He had asked Sakiko for a movie recommendation that Miyu would like, and had used this to convince her to go see the movie together. Sakiko is relieved that she isn't hiding anything from Miyu anymore but Miyu is surprised that Shuya truly loves her, and resolves to talk to him properly. She also thanks Yudo for his concern and meddling and he wishes her good luck. Excited, Miyu rushes to Shuya's class to talk to him and meets Tomoka, who tries to instigate negative emotions in Miyu. Again she tries to make Miyu feel bad but the latter is more confident now and she calmly but boldly tells Tomoka off. Shuya comes right after Tomoka leaves, and Miyu asks for a favor. In the next scene, we see them riding Yudo's bicycle together, and they have an affectionate conversation as they make their way to their spot on the hill. Here, much to his chagrin, Miyu asks Shuya if he is working part-time and he confesses. He also explains that Tomoka is his coworker, and because they usually finish late at night, he would walk with her to the station. Miyu wonders why he didn't tell her and he reveals that he is trying to save for their second anniversary because he forgot their first and hadn't gotten her anything, so now he wants to make it up to her. Miyu is amazed at his thoughtfulness as she learns that he only wanted to surprise her and she was worried for nothing. Shuya reminds her again that he loves when she smiles and they both remember when they first met. It was the day Miyu was caught under the rain and Shuya gave up his umbrella for her. Back in the present, he tells Miyu that it was love at first sight, and hugs her. With a full heart, Miyu stares up at him and he kisses her on the cheek before hugging her again, and her joy is evident. In the next scene, we see Tomoka having a small birthday party from which she excuses herself and places a call to Shuya. Shuya tells Miyu that he has to leave, but before he goes, she tells him that they can go to the movies any day, not just on the first of every month. She also confesses that she wants to see him more, and after agreeing to meet later in the evening for the movie, Shuya leaves to meet up with Tomoka. Upon getting to Tomoka, he finds out that she lied, and they don't have a shift instead she only called him out to confess her feelings. She tearfully tells him that she likes him but Shuya who is head over heels for Miyu apologizes with a blank expression, before leaving. 
He comes back to wish Tomoka a happy birthday and finally leaves, as she sobs heartbroken. Standing under a dark sky, Miyu can be seen reading a text from Shuya, who tells her to come to the clock tower as lightning flashes overhead. She realizes that no matter how many times the day is repeated, she may not be able to save her boyfriend. But unwilling to give up and fueled by the certainty of her emotions as well as his, she still wants to save him. As Miyu races towards the clock tower, we see Shuya also running there, determined to get to her. Again, a speeding white van makes its way towards them, and as Shuya tries to cross, his attention is on Miyu as he steps in front of the van. We see Miyu push her boyfriend out of the way and get hit instead. The clock strikes 7, but lightning does not strike the clock tower like before, and this time, Miyu is the unconscious one. Shuya yells for help, crying and cradling a limp Miyu who slowly opens her eyes. She weakly raises her hand to his face, relieved that he is completely fine and as Shuya sobs, she closes her eyes and slips away. Miyu wakes up in the hospital and her mom gushes happily over her, but Miyu is only thinking about Shuya. She asks her mother who explains that Shuya saved her life and is also in the hospital. Hurriedly, Miyu rushes to see him and sees a breathing tube connected to him. Then we see what really happened. The day that Miyu and Shuya argued at the clock tower, she accused him of playing with other girls, hurting his feelings as well as hers. Absent-mindedly, she crosses the street and does not notice a speeding vehicle coming towards her, but Shuya does and sprints to save her but gets hit instead. All this while, November 1st was not really repeating itself. In reality, Shuya had been hit while trying to save her. Deducing this, Miyu cries loudly for her lost love as her mother consoles her. When she finally calms down, her mother gives her an envelope addressed to her and tells her that Shuya was holding it just before the accident. With shaky hands, Miyu opens it and reads the heartfelt words that Shuya had written to her. He apologizes for the distance that had grown between them, we see how much he cared for her, waiting and hoping to see her at every opportunity. His affection for her is evident as he stares lovingly at their framed picture on his desk while writing, and we see that he wanted to give her the letter just before the terrible incident that night. Miyu reflects on herself and hurting inside, she decides to experience each day to the fullest, as she looks forward to when she would see her love again.